I'm going to discuss an example which I've taken from Feynman's Lectures on Physics, Volume 3. Um, so I would urge you to go and look at that book if you want to understand a little bit more about this. He writes in a very clear way. So we assume that we have a source of particles coming in on the left, um, and there is then a piece of apparatus which will split those particles according to um, their angular momentum component projected along an axis, say the z-axis. Potentially it can then select them uh, and then it recombines them. Um, and so I've drawn that with a little box here and here are the particles coming out on the right hand side and I've put an axis down at the bottom. Um, if we're dealing with L equals 1, as I've put in the title, um, then after selection we will have um, a particular state of the system. Um, we'll be in an eigenstate of the angular momentum projection. Um, we will be in the state M. A, where m is equal to 1, 0, or minus 1. That's the basic element uh, we're going to use, uh, and we're going to combine these, and we're also going to consider different axes. So let's assume a, a second apparatus. Which we'll put along a different axis. Um, oops, that's wrong. Let me just rub that out. A second apparatus, um, which is along the axis B. Um, so if we sketch that, then we have particles coming in. We have A here, uh, and then we have particles coming out of A and going into B and then continuing on. Um, and after A, then we will have the system in state ket MA. So it's an eigenstate of the angular momentum projected along the axis in A. And after B, it'll be in the state ket M, B. Um, and if we wanted to, we could write those as vectors, say little a and little b. Um, and again, after b, we would be in the state ket b with m again equal to plus 1, 0, or minus 1. Um, the fraction of particles which were selected by a, which leave b, will be given by, we'll call this alpha, um, and it's going to be the square modulus of ket ma, that's what comes out of a, taken with bra mb. Um, and that's the squared modulus because we want the total fraction rather than the amplitude. Let's choose a basis, um, because this is what we've been doing. Um, and I'm going to say that these are going to be the eigenstates of the angular momentum projected along the axis of A. Uh, so typically we use this as being the, the z-axis. Um, it's perfectly possible to do other axes. Um, then, now let's assume also that we're going to choose plus in A um, and zero in B are selected. We can then write the vector for A is going to be 1, 0, 0. That represents the state um, that A is in. And because we're working in the eigenbasis, we just have that 1, 0, 0. The vector for B is a little more complex. Um, and what we do is we take a vector which contains the overlap between plus A and MB, remembering that M is 0, 0, A, and m, b, and then minus a, and m, b. That describes the state um, that the system is in when it has left b. Um, if you want to think about why we can see the plus a and the m, b um, there, and that how that relates to alpha, then just remember that alpha is actually equal to the square modulus of little vector b dotted with little vector a, um, which is going to be, now we have to be careful, because remember these are complex numbers, so we're going to take the square modulus of b is going to be a row vector, we're going to have mb plus a, okay, I've switched those round because we've taken the complex conjugate, we're going to have 0a mb, and then, uh, that's the wrong way around completely, I'm just going to delete that, 
Uh, and go back and rewrite that as MB0A. Um, and then we're going to have MB minus A. It's going to be our row vector. Um, and that's going to be dotted with a column vector of 1, 0, 0. Uh, and then we're going to square all of that. Sorry, I've run out of space. That's a bit messy. Um, but that's then equal to the square modulus of MB plus A. Now let's introduce a third piece of apparatus. So add a third. Third apparatus, which is also going to be along A. Whoops. Um, and we'll label this A2. So again, we would have particles coming in. Here's A. Here's B. Uh, here's A2. And we're going to go plus 0, 0 this time. Um, and in this case, we would have the kets plus A, 0 B, and plus A2. In terms of vectors, we would have little a is equal to 1, 0, 0, as before. Little b is going to be equal to plus a, 0, b, 0, a, 0, b, and minus a, 0, b. Let's close off the kets there, extend this bracket down and close that bracket. Uh, let's just tidy that up. And then A2, the vector which represents the state of the system when it's emerged, um, is going to equal 0, 1, 0, because we've selected that as being along the 0 axis. Um, the fraction of particles selected by B leaving A2 Uh, is going to be given by beta, which is the square modulus of 0, A2, 0, B. Um, so this time we have the 0, B as the ket, because that's what's left the apparatus B, and 0, A2 is what we're applying. Um, so the total fraction, the total leaving A2, is going to be equal to the square modulus of 0, A2, 0, B, multiplied by 0, B, plus A. OK, so we've combined um, two different kets, uh, two different bra kets, rather. So the, the right-hand one, the plus A, 0, B, is the first selection. And then the left-hand one, the 0, B, 0, A2, is the second selection. If we were to open B entirely then what we would have to do is actually we would have to include all of the states of B we'd have to include 0 B and plus B and minus B effectively um, and we could write that as being um, so the total leaving A2 would then be the sum over MB of the square modulus of 0, A2, MB, and then MB plus A. But we know that the sum over a complete set of eigenstates um, is just the identity operator. We've done that before in class. So that's going to equal the square modulus of 0, A2, plus A, which is 0. So by opening that central selection apparatus, 
we remove the effect of that central apparatus. So when the particles leave A, they're in the state plus A, they pass through B and because we are not interacting with the particles, um, they will remain in the state plus A. So when they then hit the final selection apparatus A2, um, which is in state zero, that's orthogonal to the first selection apparatus and so we get no particles at all. It's a slightly counterintuitive effect. Um, this little demonstration should give you a good understanding of the difference between probabilities um, and coefficients and how those work together. You might like to go back over this again um, using the eigenstates of B rather than A. Um, that would be an interesting thing to do. It would give you some good exercise, some good practice in using this notation.